Okay, it is now one o'clock. We'll start the webinar. Um, thanks again for being here today, everyone. My name is Hyung Kim, the Senior Marketing Manager here at Burning Glass, and will be your moderator for today's webinar. Today, we have Dr. Ann Trambor, who is the Executive Director of Digital and Open Enrollment Programs at the Darden School Foundation, University of Virginia. Previously, Dr. Trumborn established and led Wharton Online, a strategic revenue producing digital learning initiative of the Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania. She holds a bachelor's degree from Brown University, a master's degree from San Francisco State University, and doctorate in education degree from the University of Pennsylvania. Ian helped pioneer new forms of student-centered online education at Coursera, Nova Education, and Stanford's online high school. Her work has resulted in a number of publications on online pedagogy and history, the future of higher education, and the future of work. She is currently working on a book with Princeton University uh, Press for a book on the history of technology in higher education. Once Dr. Trumborn is do done with her presentation, Ms. Meredith Shefford, our strategic account manager, will briefly discuss on how Burning Glass can support your institution. Followed by Meredith, we'll have a Q&A session. Please type in your questions as we present and we'll address your questions after our presentation. If your questions are not addressed, we'll reach out to you separately. And this webinar will be recorded and will be sent to your inbox. Thank you. Without further ado, floor is yours, Dr. Trumbler. Thank you so much, Chaeyoung, and hi, everybody. Um, I cannot see you except those little numbers on my screen, but um, I'm thrilled by the response and happy to talk to you today. And I'm really looking forward to your questions um, at the end of the presentation. So today we're going to talk about expanding access to business education using job market data um, and particularly how um, we've helped faculty see our non-traditional students. And I'm going to do that using two case studies, one from Wharton and then one from Darden. The overall three main questions um, that we're going to be addressing. Um, how I encourage faculty to use job market data in designing new programs, um, how we work with marketing firms um, to create new data-driven ways to reach new audiences and make a data-informed media buys, um, and then how we use burning glass data in conjunction with other data sources um, that are available to the institution so that you know each one is a little jigsaw puzzle piece, and then we put them together um, to get a better sense of who our new learners are in this new world. So why do any of this? Uh, we have a changing learn work landscape, as you know, and it does pose new questions for business schools. Um, one of the major questions, everything else is pretty much a sub a question of this first one, which is how do business schools meaning participate in the 60-year curriculum. Um, you know, for years we've really had a lock on the two-year curriculum um, in, a, in a very narrow window, right? It was finishing off bachelor's uh, degree, you know, for a graduate degree that was two years, and then folks pretty much didn't need to come back after that. Um, that is no longer true. Um, and now we have the question of how we remain relevant to both our degree learners and also our non-degree learners, which we need to start reaching in order to inform our relevance and our survival in the future. Um, that's one question. Another question that brings up is how we encourage faculty to teach new learners that they'll never meet on topics that they have newly researched. So one metaphor I use often is that, you know, currently, we teach learners in captivity at business schools. Um, we have a long uh, process by which we get folks interested in our, our degree programs. Um, we ask them to give us money for the chance to apply. They apply. They send, commit about 200 to $250,000 um, and two years of their time. And then we tell them what they have to do in order to get out. Um, and so that is what faculty are used to. How do we reach learners in the wild? Um, we have to reach learners in the wild. We don't have the physical resources, uh, either classrooms or faculty. 
um, to really scale our offerings. And our faculty knowledge production can't keep pace with technology knowledge production and skills. So in the past, when business schools were first started, um, you know, faculty and academic institutions really were the engine of knowledge about business. Um, and we brought insights to industry. Now industry is bringing insights to us because the uh, academic and university method of producing knowledge is so much slower than knowledge production at many of um, our largest companies today. Also, faculty want to know who learners are and what they need before designing curriculum. Um, however, they've only ever taught students uh, in captivity. They, those students have been vetted through our traditional admissions process. Um, so how do we give faculty a picture of who it is that they're teaching? Um, and then also, we many of us do have very sophisticated marketing practices to reach new learners, but those practices are designed to sell a two-year, quarter of a million dollar experience and a degree. And marketing shorter programs to people who may never come to camp campus is a different proposition. So the answer to begin solving some of these problems and answering some of these questions really is looking to new data sources. Um, I've listed five that uh, uh, we use either in combination at Wharton and at Darden. Um, job market data from Burning Glass um, to determine current needs and trends. Uh, uh, market research into new programs, uh, including certs and short programs, um, which we can also get from Burning Glass. You can also get from marketing agencies. Um, there's no such thing as bad data. Bring it all in. Um, competitor data. What similar programs exist in the marketplace? Um, those of you who are, you know, clicking on Harvard and Stanford and others, you know, websites to see what they're offering and driving their Google Analytics up. Uh, um, that's, uh, you know, that is also part of the picture too. Uh, platform data. This is something folks don't necessarily think of, but you know, I always ask, um, you know, our learning channel uh, platforms, you know, what are the top courses um, that you're seeing uh, students take? Um, and if you uh, do partner with a channel partner, um, oftentimes they'll show you data on which of your institution's courses um, are most popular. And that's, that's really critical as well. And then finally, ethnographic research. Um, you know, at Darden, we're very lucky. We have a fantastic design thinking curriculum. And so we do uh, employ current students to do some ethnographic uh, research um, for us so that we can get a richer uh, perspective on who our learners are. So I'm going to start with case study number one. You'll see here mostly what I end up presenting to faculty. So you'll, you'll get a sense of what it looks like uh, when, I, when I go to a faculty member with um, some of this data. Um, this was a little bit of a retroactive uh, uh, process. We had a digital marketing certificate that the faculty had built, but we we're having trouble dialing in on who the audience was. We knew we needed to revise the content slightly, <clears throat> not to do whole new videos, but to add the right readings, the right assessments, how do we design pro projects that are meaningful to the learner? We were just shooting in the dark. Um, you know, we had a bunch of names that had signed up online and we didn't really know who these folks are. We had surveyed them, but the results were pretty, you know, our N was pretty small. So we didn't really trust um, that data. So I, I called Burning Glass and said, um, you know, can, can you, help me answer this question um, using the tools that are in your, your website platform, which Meredith is gonna show you um, right after this. Um, so our research question was, can, can we even use labor market supply and demand to better target our program marketing? Um, and uh, and I, I will say that, that my boss, who was uh, a faculty member and the former chair of, a, of the marketing department at Wharton, was skeptical, but the good news is, is uh, we proved him wrong. <laughs> so the first question we asked is, who needs this program? Who is the target market? And in conjunction with our ad agency, we had come up with a list of titles that we thought were useful, um, that we thought were useful to target, but also who found the program useful. Um, and some of these were, were, were taken from past data, folks who had um, taken the course. Um, but when we looked at in Burning Glass for the related roles, um, we've, we saw this huge list 
on the right here of many more titles. And when we added those titles into our search and burning class, we found that there are a wide variety of skills um, that those folks needed that we actually taught in our certificate that we were not amplifying or surfacing to folks. So the number one question from learners, those of you who have tried to sell these things out in the wild, is the learners will often ask, what's in it for me? What can I do after taking this program that I couldn't do before? And in the past, we had always asked the professors that question. And oftentimes, the professors have a pretty good answer. But it's usually not as complete an answer as we have with burning glass data. So when we looked at um, occupations and the key skills that they needed to increase their salary, we found that we were teaching many of these in the certificate, but we were not telling learners that, and we were not surfacing that um, to potential learners. So we definitely were able to act on this insight um, right away. Um, another area we, we looked at for targeting learners is, is where can we find them? Um, so we did know um, from past performance again that Wharton online courses uh, were shockingly kind of you know intensely distributed via geography. Um, the areas surrounding us were our biggest subscribers. Um, and so luckily we found that the top metropolitan area, the number one metropolitan area where the professionals needing the skills we were teaching in this program were located locally. This saved us quite a bit of money um, with our social media buys um, because we were able to, you know, take take money away from, um, uh, you know, selling things in the southeast and, and, and move it more towards uh, the northeast. So you may be asking yourself at this point, boy, I signed up for a, a webinar that I thought was going to be about pedagogy and talking to faculty, and instead, I just watched a whole bunch of marketing data. Um, and that's because good pedagogy is good marketing. And again, when we go into the wild, right, to find learners that we have never seen before, the, the same principles that we use to do good marketing are the same principles we use when we stand in front of a classroom. First question is, as a teacher, who is our learner? The first question you ask as a marketer is, who is our customer? So if we can get over the idea that we might be calling learners customers, which um, can be controversial in some circles, um, we know that both have knowing the learner or the customer as their foundation. And the more that we know about them, the better we're able to give them what we need. So really it's about creating a circle of fulfillment right where we reach out to the right people who have what we who want what we can offer them and then we offer them what they need so that they're happy and we have a good we create a good educational experience so my next case study and then i will let you uh let you ask your questions after meredith is um darden programs and marketing so I joined Darden about a year ago, and uh, the problem that became sort of immediately apparent was that we had, like most institutions, a product-centered or faculty-led portfolio process. So faculty would say, I have new research, I have a book, um, I would like to do a program on this. And we said, awesome. Um, the marketing that we did do um, was based primarily on persona work, that was developed through ethnographic methods. We had contracted out with an agency to do this for us. And it was great. It was rich, it was detailed, and it was based on nine people. Um, and so as a result of these two forces, the product-centered uh, you know, product, um, and then marketing based on a very small N, we found that we had a lack of product market fit. Um, and that this created frustrated faculty who felt that they had put in a lot of work for not a lot of return, um, and leadership who were displeased um, on, on a number of levels, you can imagine. So the question was, how do we change course without throwing anyone under the bus? Um, I was new and I was remote. And so my first call, frankly, was, was burning glass. And then my second call 
was to uh, our marketing folks. Um, and we have a great team at Darden. And one of our uh, marketing analysts, uh, Brandy, actually went through as a research project and gathered all of the data that we had for our participants over the past five years and came up with general aggregate composite, who was our learner. Well, we knew that, you know, these were the top five titles. Here were our top five com companies. Here were our top five industries. And here's where we drew from. So that was our past data. That is where we had been. Now, where are we gonna go in the future? And what is happening now in the present? So we connected this data from the past to data from the present. And for that data from the present, we looked to burning glass. So we found that there was overlap in the titles of the learners we had served and the learners who were gonna use um, our content or could use our content. Um, but we did find new areas to explore. Um, we definitely found new areas to explore in terms of the top 10 companies, um, most of whom are in our region um, that, that are advertising for skills we teach that we are not involved with. So that's a, another tremendous opportunity. Um, same thing with industries, you know, fertile new pathways for us to go down. Um, and we also discovered because we, we did a version of this for every single uh, category, of course, that we offer leadership, data, design thinking, et cetera, um, <clears throat> that the DC Arlington Alexandria area was one of the number one or number two areas for demand for these skills. So that also fo focused our strategic marketing efforts, um, which was really useful and saved us a lot of time and money. The goal of this all, um, really is to get as many different data sources as we can. Um, and I'm switching gears a little bit to show you um, an, an executive leadership program um, that like many business schools, we have had a, you know, a flagship executive leadership program. And we've seen enrollments kind of flatline over the, over the past few years. Um, and we really wanted to see, you know, what's, what is the value of this in, in the marketplace? No one knew anymore. We've been running this program for fi over 50 years, for 60 years, um, you know, and, and empirical data abounds and anecdotes abound, right? Professors remember this, we have, you know, uh, learners who come back and connect with us, but there was no real sense of how this program performs against the competition. We just didn't know very much about how it's showing up in the wild. Um, and so we asked Burning Glass to help us get some visibility into um, where our learners are um, and uh, on social media and otherwise. And, we, and what the ROI of this program is. And they found that, first of all, executive leadership programs work. Um, so they do, graduates from those programs do reach the VP level or above in five years or less, um, which is more than twice what happens with MBA students. So this is something that we can certainly start, you know, messaging to our potential learners. This really is a fast track um, to the VP or C-suite. And we combine that with here's a little bit of ethnographic research, actual pictures of our learners. So here's uh, Noel, one of our past participants who speaks very highly of the course. And uh, we did some in-depth interviews with him. And again, when we bring all of these data sets to faculty, it really helps them understand what kind of changes we might need, need to make to a program, what kind of designs we need for a new program, what kind of delivery methods we want to use, what kind of new innovations we can use to deliver. Um, really, it's, it's about bringing a rich data set um, that's, not, that's, that's connected. Um, and that involves the spaces that we can't see, right? The different spaces people inhabit now. So if we look at social profile data, um, you know, TEP is ranked second amongst executive leadership programs. So even though we see that, uh, you know, our internal numbers, you could look at our internal numbers and say, boy, enrollments have been flat for a couple of years. Um, now we know that, that our uh, graduates are super excited to be part of it, so much so that we are the second most represented executive program um, on social media data. 
So I'll just wrap up with, with a final conclusion. Um, this is not a comprehensive uh, lecture or webinar by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, every those of us who have been in business education for a while know that every 18 months or so, um, the Wall Street Journal or someone likes them writes a headline like this or something like it. Do you need to get an MBA? Is the MBA dead? Um, the management degree isn't a good fit for everyone. And you know, I, I don't think I don't think the MBA is going away. Um, I do think that the reach and relevance of the MBA can stabilize for all the forces that we've talked about before. Um, and in order to, to move forward to even um, expand our reach and relevance, even of the MBA, we need data, but we certainly need it for lifelong learning because lifelong learning will only grow. And lifelong learning gives folks the chance to get uh, targeted specific education that they can immediately use to jump start their careers. And it doesn't take the time or the money um, of a degree program. Um, and we need to be able to show this to learners. That's what we're looking for. But as, a, as an industry, business schools, we don't yet do a really great job of really showing what the ROI is, um, in part because we don't know it. And this is another conclusion here on this slide that Burning Glass Insights was able to get us um, that our leadership positions abound and that our TEP graduates are more likely to be uh, found in general management positions than our uh, non-UVA executive program counterparts. So, you know, putting all these pieces together and we watch the Polaroid develop. So the key to our survival is using different data sources to see our learners and meet their needs. We look at their job title. So we look for related jobs and skills. We look for projected demand. Meredith will show you the tools we use to do that. We look at the geography, right? Where are they? Uh, what metropolitan areas are they in? What industries are in that area? What are the demands for the skills? Can we ask the faculty to address some of those skills uh, in their lectures or in assignments? Um, and then also social media. Um, where, where are our folks? What do they look like when they inhabit these liminal spaces or these virtual realms? Um, what do they look like? What do they say about Darden? How do they integrate Darden or Warden or any of your schools um, into their profile and into their identity? Um, really critical and an ongoing conversation. We're still figuring out the answers and what, what this all means. Um, but the main conclusion is for sure, and I don't think this is controversial, that data does enable access to education uh, for learners, and it will ensure a future for business schools. So thank you for your time. Um, Meredith is up next. She is going to take you through um, uh, kind of the tools that we used in order to get these nice charts um, that I just showed you. So thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions later. So hey everyone, I am Meredith Shepherd. I am a strategic account manager here at Burning Glass along with two other SAMs as we call ourselves and our partnership director team. We help ensure a smooth transition from being a new customer to being a current one and helping you have helping you make sure you have everything you need along the way. So from Anne's demonstration, you can see that Burning Glass delivers real-time data and planning solutions to help institutions better understand the um, labor market needs, inform academic programming, and guide students towards careers. Much like UVA, our mission is to form a common language for employers, educators, and learning using real-time jobs data and in-demand skills to build more successful programs that deliver not only learning outcomes, but career outcomes. And we do this through our web app tools, applied research projects, and APIs. So some impacts that institutions like UVA have seen um, that use burning glass is communicating and marketing the career value of your institution's programs, optimizing data-driven recruitment and marketing decisions based on prospective student data, gaining further insights on alumni and showcasing those alumni success, building and revising the right programs based on labor market demand, discovering new revenue opportunities based on labor market demands, 
and connecting your programs to the jobs of the future. And now Burning Glass works with over 400 higher education partners, but corporate research and government entities also trust our data. Higher education has found itself in unchartered territory and plays a significant role in the road ahead. With the mix of the right programs, such as degreed, non-degreed, certificates, short courses, and micro-credentialing, and adding marketable skills into curriculum, it can unlock opportunity and mobility and result in lifeboat jobs, reskilling opportunities, career pathways, and high growth, well-paying jobs. So you might be wondering what specifically we do and how we do it. So we use artificial intelligence technology to scrape over 50,000 online job site sources daily and in real time. From there, we collect and deduplicate over 1 million job sites and postings daily. And once the information is aggregate, aggregated, then we parse out over 70 plus facts about an online job posting. This includes specific skills, skill clusters, education, certifications, experience, work activities required for the job, as well as information about salary, of course, number of openings, job type, and industry codes. We then organize the data, adding a tagging and structuring framework to create a common language. And then this common language helps make that connection between employers and education. And this helps our customers like UVA use labor market data for academic planning, program development, employer partnerships, as well as marketing efforts. So this is Labor Insight, which is one of our easy to use web applications at Burning Glass. It's our flagship research platform and it's used to analyze the labor market locally or nationwide. As UVA recognized early on, new skills and occupations are emerging every day. Labor Insight makes it easy to stay current. You can use this in-depth localized labor market data to connect your programs to the jobs of the future. Develop a curriculum based on accurate, real-time data to increase enrollments and improve student success. And this tool makes it really easy to identify high demand industries, occupations, job titles, and skills to connect your programs back to the workforce and make your students' workforce ready. Labor Insight includes presentation-ready dashboards and reports that allow you to really dig in deep into customized queries and results. Understanding what alumni are doing after they graduate from your institution can provide an overall understanding on how your jobs, excuse me, how your programs are preparing students for the job market. Alumni analysis is a premium add-on Labor Insight dashboard and can provide valuable information to showcase alumni career success. And Program Insight combines Burning Glass's real-time career database with public data sources, such as the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the Department of Education, or IPEDS. Access all of this data in one place to link your programs and certificates directly to the labor market. Explore and validate new occupations, programs, and skills. View all your programs in one clear centralized location to assess your overall health of your programs across departments. And you can easily explore emerging skills to ensure you are teaching towards the future. So that was a really brief overview, but please use this email address to learn more about Burning Glass tools and services or to inquire about how you can gain access to them. And now we have time for some questions. Thank you, Meredith, um, and thank you, Dr. Trumbor. Um, the first question here we received is, how receptive were the faculty in incorporating labor market data to select programs to create and expand? Well, I'll be absolutely honest with you. It depended what the data said. Um, so if, uh, and, and, and by the way, this is, I'm telling you this so that you don't make this mistake. So, um, you know, when the data provided uh, a demand, uh, showed a demand for the professor's topic, um, it was highly useful. And most of the time that is the case, but I did make the mistake of using data um, to sort of prove a point that there wasn't a market and um, the professor immediately questioned the data. So um, I would not do that again, but um, I would say on the whole, 
it really is immensely valuable. I mean, look, most of these folks are master teachers and you know they they do just they're aware that they're used to teaching the same types of students. Um, so they are really eager to know um, who folks are um, in their classes. And so for the most part, it's been really useful. Okay, um, thank you. And the follow-up question was, how quickly were you able to implement these tools into your workflow? Uh, super easily, but again, I don't, I'm not afraid of breaking things. So I just kind of get in and I'm like this toddler, like, ah, push this button. Um, and uh, luckily, the system is so intuitive that I didn't break anything or blow up burning glass or melt down my computer. Um, I was actually able to find uh, what I needed pretty quickly. Um, however, I will say that when I needed to ask uh, more sophisticated questions, like the one I showed um, from, from Wharton at the beginning, um, I did use the training, which was so easy. Um, and, you know, I just signed up online at a time that was right for me. And then we worked on the project together um, and it took about an hour. Oh, wow. That's good. Um, and I guess another question for you, how much training have you had on the tools? Um, so an hour. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll add on to that. I should say for those of you who may not consider themselves as tech savvy as Anne, we do have uh, our wonderful customer success management team. So I work very closely with them. They're regionalized so that um, they're working with similar schools in your area. And so we try to make sure that you have a team of people who are there to support your needs, help you identify goals, and then get more in-depth training into the tools and uh, research questions. So we're here if you need us. Awesome. Um, this is um, from Miss Teresa, question for you, Anne. How are your program outcomes looking? Have you seen an improvement in enrollments? Absolutely, um, right away. Um, we not only saw, uh, we saw more leads, we saw more enrollments, um, and more importantly, we were able to, to track our spending uh, more accurately. So we were able to, you know, determine, um, you know, what came from when we switched the program, switched the spend based on the, the labor market data, we, we immediately saw um, uptick tick in leads. I mean, it really is about finding product market fit. Um, and we just don't know the market that well. Um, so this really helps us. Okay, um, awesome, thank you. Um, this is uh, for Mr. Michael, it's a question for you, Meredith. Um, can you talk through how Burning Glass collects the job posting data? Um, is there the duplication, et cetera? Yes, great question. We get this question a lot. And it's really important to how we do things here at Burning Glass and one of the reasons that it makes us quite unique. So we're looking at millions of job postings every single day. And the deduplication process is really important because what that means is if we come across five job postings, we are going to recognize that it's actually the same job and we're going to limit it then down to one so that when you all are using our data, it's giving you the most accurate information as possible so that you are seeing that it's one job, not five, that's going to impact the, um, the outcomes for your students and what possibilities they have out in the real world. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, this one is from Mr. Chris, question for Anne. Uh, what if my target audience is very dispersed? How do I gauge their level of readiness? So ready, so what is the proxy for readiness? Um, I, I guess would be my, my question back to you. Um, so, you know, you can filter by uh, uh, education level. Um, and often when we run searches uh, in a program for a program topic, we actually, uh, I will do three different searches. I'll do one where it's bachelor's, I'll do one where it's master's, I'll do one where it's a terminal degree or above and kind of slice the market that way. And then also do one where there is no bachelor's required. Um, and that gives you a sense when you, when you look at the roles that come up for the listings based on education in that topic area, you can kind of see where folks are in their career and you know the, the complexity of the decisions that they have to make. So it's not exact, you're still reading tea leaves a little bit, but it's a lot more informed than throwing spaghetti against the wall, which is what we have, we have been doing. Awesome, um, a quick question for Meredith, how can we get in touch with you? <laughs> oh, well, 
Uh, you can use sales at burning-glass.com and you'll get routed in the right direction. Yep, and then um, I can add on to that. If you uh, visit www.burningglass.com, there's a form where you can submit your request and then we'll get we'll be able to get back to you within 48 business hours. Um, yeah, those are all the questions that came in, everyone. Um, thank you so much for your time and uh, Dr. Ann Trumborn and Ms. Shepard. Those are very good presentations. Um, and thanks everyone for attending our webinar today. Uh, we appreciate it. This has been recorded and we'll be sending the recordings to you to your inbox. Thank you so much today for attending today and have a great day. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Bye.